Hi guys, it's Russell here from The Presenter. I hope you're well and I hope you're keeping your audiences engaged. If you're not, then it might be because you don't have enough slides in your presentation. So let me explain what I mean by that. I'm going to answer this question. This is something that I get asked an awful lot. How many slides should I have in my presentation? Should it be 24? Should it be 48? Should it be 60? Should it be 100? Should it be 200? I'm going to clear up this confusing area of presentation design for you. And the answer I think you'll find quite illuminating and it should free you up to focus more on just creating a good presentation and not worrying too much about the number of slides you have. So here at The Presenter, our clients love the work that we do for them. And what happens an awful lot is they will send us 10 slides of content for our guys to redesign and we'll then confuse them completely by sending them back about 30 or 40 slides of exactly the same content. Now, as you can imagine, when our clients open up the presentations that we send back to them, there's this nagging question in their head and normally they pick up the phone and say, Russell, how are we gonna get through all of this content you've sent back to us in the 20 to 30 minutes that we've got with our client to present? Well, the answer is really simple, of course. We haven't added any content to the presentation that you sent us originally. All we've done is we've looked at the content and we've given all of the key points that you really need to get across to your audience room to breathe. And I want to explain what I mean by that because it's really, really important and it's something that does get overlooked an awful lot by pretty much, I'd say, 99% of people that are out there building presentations right now. So let's take a look at this example. Let's imagine that we're presenting to a small group. It could be online, it could be in person, really doesn't matter, the same rules apply. What we see an awful lot of, of course, is just a simple list of bullet points. Now, that's the subject for another video, which I will make soon. This is obviously not a good way to present, but I want to ignore that fact for now and just get you to think about this simple thing. If we have lots of information on one slide, where are our audience's eyes going to fall? Well, the answer, of course, is all over the place. We have no control at all on where our audiences are going to be looking as we present the points on this slide. And that can create all sorts of problems because, of course, you as the presenter would first of all talk about point one, then point two, three, four, and so on. Your audience, even though they're trying to listen to you talk about point one, they could already be reading point six. And that means they're trying to read one piece of information and listen to a completely separate piece of information at the same time. And I don't know about you, but that is virtually impossible to do. Our brains are just not wired to do listening and reading on two different things at the same time and then store that information in a really useful way. So what we want to do is avoid showing them too much information on one slide. And this is the reason that we send back 30 or 40 slides to our clients when they originally send us 10, because we give the content room to breathe. So here's what I mean. If we take the very first point at the top of our list here, we would actually give that one slide on its own. So we would use better visuals, we would bring it to life in some way. Maybe it's something really, really simple like what I've done here, a simple icon and a heading. Now that means that we are now controlling what our audiences are looking at. And we're talking about that point at the same time. That's going to help them understand the key messages that we want to get across every single time we move to something new. So it's going to remove all of that confusion. And of course, content is king. If we don't focus 
on getting the content across to our audience in a nice, easy, digestible way for them and for their brains, their eyeballs and their ears to understand, then we are going to fail as presenters. And when you fail as a presenter, you basically don't allow your audience to retain any of the information that you're showing them. So it's a successful presentation is one that people can recall six weeks later, six months later even. If they can't recall any of the information or a small amount of the information, even a few days later, then it has been an epic fail. And it was a waste of your time designing it. It was a waste of your time delivering it. And of course, we've wasted all of our audience's time as well. So that's why we don't need to worry about how many slides we have in our presentation. And the challenge I want to set to everyone listening to this video right now is to completely forget about how many slides you have and focus more on the clarity of your presentation. Focus more on the clarity of the content and how you get that across to your audience. Make sure that they can understand the content, make sure that they are engaged by the content, and the most important thing of all, make sure that it's memorable for them. If it isn't memorable, it was a waste of time. So think about your content more than the number of slides, and I hope you found that useful. Rethink your presentations, I'm going to be delivering lots of videos like this, helping you rethink, refresh and represent your work presentations. If you need to reach out to me, my email address is at the bottom of the screen here. Hope you found it useful and take care.